And there are a lot of different autoantibodies that we see in juvenile myositis, and they can be broken down into two types. So those that are specific to this disease called myositis specific autoantibodies or MSAs. And these are autoantibodies that are only seen in patients with myositis, no other diseases. Patients almost always only have one or none. And they're present in about 70% of, of kids with myositis. Or uh, you could have an autoantibody associated with myositis, and this is called a myositis-associated autoantibody. These are autoantibodies that are seen in myositis, but they're also seen in other autoimmune diseases. They can be found alone in a single patient, they can coexist with a myositis-specific autoantibody, or they can coexist with other myositis-associated autoantibodies. And you can see the list on the right is very long for both of these groups. And I'm going to go over them um, individually, especially the myositis specific autoantibodies. So these are the main myositis specific autoantibodies that we see in kids that have myositis. And the three most common ones are the ones in the box that I've listed here. So anti-P155-140, anti-MJ, and anti-MDA5. And the other ones occur in kids with myositis too, but are much less common. And as you can see here by the pictures, is they all go along with different clinical features. So most of the time, these kids have features of disease that can be grouped together based on their autoantibody. And then we can kind of understand what their disease might look like. And they occur in different percentages too. So these again are the three most common that were in that box in the prior slide. Anti-P155-140 is the most common in about 23 to 30% of juvenile patients. Anti-MJ is the second most common in 12 to 23% of kids. And anti-MDA5 is the third most common. And this percentage here, it has a pretty wide range of seven to 33%. And that's because it geographically varies. So that 7% is from uh, US and European studies, whereas the 33% is from Japanese studies. So it's much, much less common um, in the Western hemisphere, but still more common than the other autoantibodies that we see, such as antisynthetase, anti-MI2, SRP, and HMGCR. And we can break down these autoantibodies into groups based on disease features, so what patients have. So this chart is actually describing autoantibody groups based on adult data. So patients, adults with myositis have autoantibodies that are the same as children, but they occur in different frequencies. Some are more common in adults and some are less common. And they also have some semi-different features, but there's a lot of overlap. Um, and I'm going to go into these individually, so don't be overwhelmed by um, this chart, but I do want to point out a couple of things. Um, malignancy is on here, meaning cancer. That does not happen in kids, um, but does happen in adults, especially with the TIF1 gamma autoantibody. And statin exposure is another thing that happens in adults and um, can preclude uh, autoantibody of HMGCR, but that's not seen in children. And then this is another way that we look at autoantibodies. So breaking it down by kind of what disease group. So we have three different groups here. Uh, we have kids with dermatomyositis or JDM. These are kids that have the typical muscle weakness along with the typical rash that is seen in JDM. And you can see here the most common autoantibody is anti-P155-140 in this group. But there's also kids that have JPM. So this is juvenile polymyositis. It's the classical muscle weakness without the rash. And you can see the percentages of different autoantibodies that occur are very different than in the JDM group. And the last one is juvenile connective tissue myositis. And again, different percentages. So we know these autoantibodies are occurring at different rates, depending on kind of what type of disease you have. 